Monique, I'm so pleased that you're here. I unashamedly say that I loved this book. I didn't know what to expect. It, it's a strange title, it's a strange idea, and I was hooked, as they might say, from day one, as indeed was your wonderful mermaid. Can you possibly just give us a picture of what the story is before we go on to talk about some of its elements, which we won't get through all of them. It, it's a love story set on a Caribbean island, and it's a love story which is very strange. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a story um, about an ancient mermaid who was once a woman, cursed to be a mermaid, cursed into exile, cursed into, and the curse is eternal, and she's captured um, during a fishing competition and rescued by somebody who doesn't really want to keep her, wants to throw her back in the sea. Those are his intentions, but she starts to sort of demetamorphosize very quickly. And then <clears throat> she's sort of, it's about um, how would we take care of an, uh, an ancient uh, woman, um, our history? Um, can this woman find a, a place for herself in the fairly modern world? And of course, it's a good old love story. It's more than one love story. And I really wanted to write a love story. Well, yeah. you succeeded admirably. Something that I, I, felt, I feel very naive now for not realizing it, but your, your mermaid, Akayaya, um, she has been cursed many thousands of years ago. And the curse that makes someone a mermaid is in a sense, jealousy and they they stop them being sexual. I've never thought of it in that yeah. way that you literally seal up their legs and make yeah. them a fish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the Spanish say about mermaids, you can't eat them and you can't fuck them. Um, it has this, um, yeah, it's an ambiguous, it's about banishing um, her sexuality. So denying her her right of passage into erotic love is, the thing that, I mean, that's, you know, all our old stories come from um, the old patriarchy and they're full of these kind of um, witches, old ladies, uh, virgins, young ladies that need to be taught a lesson about their sexuality. So most old stories are, are worth rewriting. And I, I when I, I'd been dreaming about my, a mermaid and then I came across the story and I thought, ah, oh, right. I'm going to give her back the thing that she was denied, which is her a rite of passage into erotic love. But yeah, I mean, it was her punishment was to desexualize her. So you get the love affair that that dominates the book, although there is another one, um, is between the mermaid and David, the fisherman, and. When she moves to his house, he takes her there. She literally her scales start falling away, and she is revealed as the woman she was. You're, it's very, very descriptive. Tell us what she looks like. Um, she's an indigenous woman um, from the Greater Antilles. She would have been Taino. Um, and she's, I wanted her to have a, a shamanic way about her. So she knows things that we don't. So she's got this transparent way with nature, the natural world. So she's constantly looking at things differently. Um, and she's, you know, she's quite messy and slovenly in a way that, well, we think she is, but she might not see that. And um, and obviously she doesn't like wearing clothes. She would have come from a, 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 a people who didn't wear clothes or much, they didn't cover themselves. And so she's just herself, really. I just wanted her to be herself, not necessarily the kind of, you know, um, cutesy mermaid beauty. I wanted her to, to be a different kind of woman altogether, really. No, she's a very, very uh, extraordinary woman. And David, of course, falls tremendously in love with her. Mm. And that, that story is a very dominant story. But of course, there's another love story going on, which mm. represents a white woman who has inherited the plantation as such. So all the way through the book, there are echoes of the colonialism, echoes of the one-time life of slavery. And yet you make the other great woman in this book, Arcadia Rain, is also extremely lovable and interesting and very empathetic. Is she a type of person that you know through your life in the Caribbean? I, I do know, I do know a handful of women like her. Um, who are, you know, tied to, they also cursed because they're tied to land and the land is tied to 
atrocities that they didn't personally commit, but it all comes with the territory. Um, I guess I got to, I mean, I have every respect for Jean Rhys and what she wanted to do, which was give um, the mad woman um, a story. But I, 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 she, we kind of got ourselves in the regional canon stuck with this mad white woman who is also a bit of a Freudian hysteric, who is, you know, just, just mad and driven mad. And it's all fine, but I just was a bit annoyed. I'm just sort of done with that, really. I just want to put her fine. But I wanted to create a, well, likable, um, somebody who's caught up in the drama of what's going on around her. And, um, and she happens to have pale skin. She happens to be European. She's white. She has a Caribbean um, consciousness. And I know a lot of people like, I don't know a lot, but I've, I've come across numerous people like Miss Rain. And so, uh, and she's, you know, and her love is cursed as well. And her child is cursed. And there's a lot of cursing going on in this book. But, but yes, you say that her love is cursed. She has also a kind of forbidden love in the same yeah. way that David and the Mermaid have forbidden yeah. love. Yeah. And, but you allow, that love to to kind of she she has she is in love with someone called life which is an extraordinary wonderful name and he does reappear yeah well i just wanted to i mean there's also porthos and priscilla who i enjoyed writing them yes. but life life for me i mean you know as a, i'm a white caribbean woman as well and and the the life love story is something that you know is I'm only too aware of this problem of, of, of being um, in some way punished by, um, by the whole damn thing, the whole history of the place, the politics of the place. This is a forbidden power play. I can't, I'm not allowed, I'm forbid, this is forbidden. But what if they fell in love when they were children? Mm -hmm. What if this love had taken root really early on before they understood the dynamic of it? And then the punishment starts to set in on them when they grow up. And of course he wants to leave. He wants, he's never going to be, you know. So I, I just, again, I know this. I know there's something about this love story that I understand and know. And I enjoyed writing it. And there's a really big scene where they're in bed and he, he gets out and he wants to say, so, and they get nowhere with it. Mm. They just get nowhere. They just get, is it his, history or love? History or love? And, and I mean, to sound corny, but love is um, as big as the politics for them. You know, there's a, it's, it's powerful. And they have a child, Reggie, who is born deaf, who, mm -hmm. who strikes up the most touching relationship with Akaya. And yeah. how did that, how did you see that, that relationship between the deaf boy and the ex-mermaid? Again, you know, these things just come, don't they? I, I've struggled with hearing loss, on and off for about a decade, really bad, related to an autoimmune illness I have. So the writing of a deaf character was always at coming. It was always gonna come. I, and then, so Reggie, I, felt, I thought, right, I can write Reggie. And then I did some research around the seventies and provision and, and, and then this idea of him also being proud and deaf and having deaf pride and being autistic and being completely fine. He's cool, he's a cool, cool little boy but he hasn't got a friend in the world no one can be his friend and so of course the mermaid and him are going to just like like you know get off to a great start with their hands with the hand um sign language so i mean you know you invent one character and then the other one you know they all have, they all start coming and then you know that you know this is what happens and uh, did you need priscilla did you need her to be in as the, <clears throat> as the person who won't leave things be, who is the gossip? Well, you know, I know, a Pris I know many Priscillas as well. And um, in Caribbean bookstagram circles, they've been discussing this book and Priscilla gets the most airtime, I'm told. It's Priscilla is the one they're all, um, they all like to discuss. And, and again, there needed to be a baddie. There needed to be somebody. There needed to be forces of, you know, and and Priscilla is somebody who you know the village the village gossip the village every small village has a Priscilla um, all over the world, and um, but she's complicated too you know I didn't want her to be a stereotype I wanted her to have reasons, and and again also there's the monetarization of um, the mermaid, and 
it's there all the time. She's worth something. And of course, this echoes with the in, huge story of trafficking of people in the region. And I think I was sort of trying to see, you know, this idea of all of us could be, if we're given power, all of us could torture somebody else if we were told to. Um, and there was something there about, okay, let's see what happens when money, big money appears and how many people, um, how quickly does, it, does a good man turn bad, like nicer country initially wants to put her back, but suddenly thinks, oh, okay. So this so, so Priscilla's just, you know, Priscilla uh, emerged as well. And I enjoyed writing her. Yes, I think you can feel that, that actually you enjoyed writing all these characters that are that are truly memorable. I mean, they are archetypes, but they're also, they're just, they don't conform to, to stereotypes. It's a completely wonderful book, and I'm afraid that's where we must leave it, but I can't urge people enough to pick this up and just escape for a while, but you'll also find yourself immersed in some really, really big themes about jealousy and feminism and people and history and geography. And yeah, it's a wonderful achievement, Ronique, and thank you so much for being with us tonight.